There's no denying that the trend in mobile devices is towards making them thinner and lighter, even if it means sacrificing features that we used to take for granted, like user swappable batteries, extensive IO options, or even something as basic as a headphone jack. Well, as for Panasonic, their FZ55 takes that trend and friggin' choke slams it. I mean, almost literally, look at, look at this freaking thing. So Panasonic sponsored this video and sent over not just the Toughbook 55, but also this box of upgrade modules, fingerprint reader, RFID reader, Blu-ray drive. Is that a graphics card? And all of these can be user upgraded if you have the inclination. And the crazy part, it's not even that thick. Oh my God, it has a SIM slot. I love this thing. <laughs> it's just... Now, first and foremost, the Toughbook 55 is, of course, a laptop. So it comes equipped with Intel's eighth generation, codenamed Whiskey Lake processors, up to 64 gigs of RAM. Check this out as a touchscreen model with stylus support. And then it has some other stuff that most people might not really think of. So one is backwards compatibility with both Panasonic's previous generation desk docks and car docks. You know, just in case you need to dock your laptop in the car. Uh, it's got a quad array microphone and get this, they claim 92 decibel peak loudness speakers. So I gotta hear these. So, sorry, the idea behind that is that it can both hear you and be heard, even under challenging conditions like, and get this, this is right from their literature, a police cruiser going down the highway with the windows down and the sirens on. Very specific. So each of these like little modular pieces right here can be removed from the laptop and then have additional components swapped into them. And here's a really crazy one. There's a quick release latch for the storage because you never know when you're gonna need to rip the SSD out of your drive, put it in a paper shredder and like freaking hard bail, right? Like what? I don't know how much I'm like supposed to pick and prod at this thing. Um, but I'm, I'm like super curious what's under here too. It's funny, there's always like really cool technology in the consumer space. And then there's really cool technology in the enterprise space. And the kinds of solutions that they build are just things that you would have never considered that anybody needed. And actually on that note, um, it can be configured with RAID 1 so that you have real-time data mirroring with the optional SSD upgrade. So it's just a standard M.2 drive and it's just got a little carrier PCB that adapts it to this um, hot pluggable interface here. I actually don't know that it is strictly speaking hot pluggable. In fact, it, it probably isn't. Um, hopefully this thing boots back up. Mercifully, I was at least uh, in sleep when I unplugged that. So I'm gonna put it back in and see if this thing fires back up immediately. Okay, we're in the BIOS. I guess that's the perfect opportunity to bring up that this thing has a ton of security features, including trusted platform module 2.0 Intel vPro, uh, NIST BIOS protection, 256-bit AES Wi-Fi encryption, optional Opal encrypted drives, and a variety of options for 2FA. Oh, there we go. Okay, uh, rebooting got the SSD to pick back up again. That was pretty dumb. So that brings us perfectly into our first upgradability adventure. So right over here on this side is a smart card reader. And if you don't work in the enterprise space, uh, you might probably think that it's sort of pointless to have like, uh, you know, smart card readers in your laptop. But actually, a lot of enterprises use these as a second factor for things like accessing confidential information, like say, a client's medical records. That's not the only option though. So let's go ahead and have a look at what else we've got here. This is a fingerprint reader module. Okay, pretty straightforward. So from the bottom here, wait, yeah. Yeah. Nope. Mm. There we go. 
we go ahead and pop that out. Pop that in. And there we go. Now we have a fingerprint sensor picked up just like that. So let's go ahead and try it. Boom, logged in. I like this thing. But let's say our organization doesn't like fingerprint readers for second factors. Now we've got, oh, an RFID reader. So there it is right there. Flip this puppy over. And now we have an RFID reader there. Then if you're not into RFID, there's also the Windows Hello infrared facial scanner. So basically the idea here is that even though this is clearly not the most space efficient way to add something as simple as an RFID scanner to a laptop, you're not stuck with any biometric security options that you don't want and you have only the ones that you do need. Now, not everybody needs that stuff and that's where the modularity comes into play. So this second bay here is actually identical there we go, to the battery bay that's on the other side. So this 6,300 milliamp hour battery nets the Toughbook 55 20 hours in MobileMark's office productivity suite. But this is where things get really cool. You can actually chuck a second one into the other side. Now, <laughs> I will say this does increase the weight of the unit fairly substantially for a whopping 40 hours. And if for whatever reason your application doesn't allow you to power down at all, you can even hot swap the batteries if you have spare ones on the side so you just never have to power the thing down. <laughs> Don't remove both of them though. That would, that, would, that would cause it to turn off. But as you guys can see, we have only just scratched the surface of all of our upgrade modules here. So why don't we go ahead and see what we can put in this slot. So once again, Panasonic has adapted the standard interface on this thing, which is presumably SATA to their own interface that, I don't know what that would be. It must be PCI Express in some form or another. At any rate, that just pops in like that. Wow, this is like really easy. It's almost too easy. Uh, one thing that they did mention is that if you're like an administrator and you don't want your users just like accidentally popping their SSDs out, um, there are locking screws that you can put in. <laughs> so that's the locking screw for the SSD if I recall correctly. And I think this one is the locking screw so people don't accidentally like rip their, their optical drive out of the laptop. So this is a Blu-ray drive. This is basically the same as the DVD drive except uh, more blue, so I don't really need to show you guys that. I think what you guys want to see is the graphics card. You want to see the graphics card? I want to see the graphics card. So this is the GPU pack, and this is why I said that Panasonic's modular interface here must be some sort of PCI Express, because otherwise how on earth would you put what appears to be a GT551? GT550, I guess? I don't know, we're gonna find out what kind of graphics card it is in just a moment, but the module looks pretty similar to our optical drive, except of course there's a cooling fan that happens to correspond with the ventilation holes on the bottom of the laptop, just like that. It's a Radeon Pro WX4150. I've never even heard of that graphics card, but we're gonna fire up some Rocket League on it nonetheless. Anyway, this update was downloading really slow, so, uh, I thought, hey, wouldn't it be great if we had an ethernet jack? Now's a good time to have a look at the IO of this thing. So we've got a USB 3 type A, USB 3 type C. Oh, there it is. We've got an ethernet jack over here. We've got micro SDXC, headphone microphone combo jack. Of course, these have uh, splash resistant covers just in case you, you know, get water on your laptop. It is IP53 rated, although Panasonic was very clear to me that I was not to leave it out in the rain. We're very clear about that. And the modularity continues, doesn't it, my friends? There is, of course, the I.O. pack, if you'd like to add some additional I.O. to your laptop. Uh, unfortunately, this pack looks, oh wait, where does this pack go? Oh, no way! It goes at the back! Okay, so at the back, we've got another USB 3 Type-A, HDMI 2.0, and then this. 
That brings our total number of bays up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait a minute. Even this back USB 3 has screws in it. What even is that? This is like an access hatch to the CPU cooling heatsink. There it is. Another freaking upload slot. So what do we have here? VGA and serial, just in case you need that. Or like not, if you don't. And then whatever the hell that is. Okay. It's kind of a clever approach, the whole dual battery pack, because it gives you that hot swap ability and it means you can take the thing on a plane, even though it has more capacity than you would be allowed to bring on if it was a single battery. Okay, I'm still waiting for my game to download and I'm just curious, like, everything on this thing goes together with screws, which is so weird in this day and age when everything is done with like clips and stuff. So I was just wondering what this is. So that's the antenna. That's the main antenna. It just has a, oh, that makes sense. It has a plastic cover because otherwise how would it work? But you want as much of this thing as possible to be made out of this uh, magnesium alloy that actually it contributes to it being quite a lot lighter than you'd expect. I mean, it's got two batteries in it now, so it's a little on the heavy side now, but with just one in it's, it's deceivingly light. Now, I remember having that same experience the first time I saw a tough book, actually, back in the early 2000s. It, it blew me away because it was like this tiny, I forget if it was like an 11 or a 12 inch model, which was really small at the time. And I was like, whoa, this thing weighs like nothing. This is so cool. How much is it? And the sales guy at London Drugs is like, oh, it's like $3,500. I was like, oh, cool. I'm a high school student. See ya. <laughs> Oh, actually, now's a good time to uh, look at the privacy mode for the keyboard. You know, you don't need to rip your SSD out, but you don't want anybody looking at your screen. It's actually still on, but the brightness is so low that no one could conceivably actually see what's on it. And then they've also got a, a night color shift thing that you can set up to either manually enable or you can set a timer or you can use the light sensor or whatever the case may be. And you can apply different uh, screen effects like you know a reading mode or you can configure your night mode. Maybe you prefer this for your night mode. Most people probably won't use that green night mode. Oh, oh, actually, oh, right, I could see. Never mind. I could see someone using like the green one or the red one depending on what environment they're in. This is another cool thing. So the keyboard actually feels pretty darn good to me. But if you didn't like it, or more realistically, if the layout wasn't uh, ideal for what you're doing or you know your language or you have a specialized application, it's also modular. <laughs> Three screws right here and you can pop off the keyboard. All right, well, I'm not saying that this is gonna be like, you know, your primary gaming device anytime soon, but 60 FPS, all high quality in Rocket League 1080p. It's not unusable, that's for sure. Boom! That sucked. No! Stop! So that was the craziest one. Now I've just got a couple more things. So first is the smart card reader. And you guys might be a little confused because you thought we already saw the smart card reader. This is the smart card reader that goes in the other side. Hold on a second. We haven't even looked under this door. Oh, oh, it's just like a RAM door. Okay, well, that's, that's fairly straightforward. And then finally, the SSD pack. So this goes where the graphics card went and inside it is presumably a similar model of SSD to the one that goes in the more SSD specific uh, door over here. Now, I wanna know what's under the security torques of this one now too. Oh, okay, so this is upgradable components, but not necessarily Panasonic's, you know, modular ones. So in here we've got our Wi-Fi. So you could swap that out for like a Wi-Fi 6 a AX module if you wanted. And then I'm actually not, it's hard to say because this has like a, a thermal pad on it. I'm not 100% sure what this is, but it's also wireless. Oh, you know what? This uh, laptop has cellular. So it's probably something to do with that. There's just a couple more things I'm curious about. There was another security Torx uh, covering this door. So I wanna know what it does. <laughs> what do we got? Oi! Oh. So that's the connector for the display. 
Now Panasonic says that the display is not a user upgradable modular thing, but like you can clearly see how it's assembled. So my guess is that if you could get your hands on one, you could probably do it, even if that's not something that they support. And I also wanted to pop the keyboard off and see uh, how that works. It's not something that I would do for switch quality. These are fine. Okay, so that's glued down. I wonder if Panasonic had intended for me to do this. I'm kind of guessing no. Well, they should have known what they were getting themselves into. Ooh! Ah! Oh, okay, so there you go. It's just some adhesive strips and then like a pretty standard ribbon interface down here. So you guys can check out the Toughbook 55 at the link in the video description, but I wanna hear from you guys in the comments. What would your loadout be? Personally, I would go with two battery packs because I am really careless sometimes and I forget to recharge my battery and that would be really, really nice for me when I'm traveling. I would, I think I'd throw in the GPU um, just cause that way I don't have to carry around an eGPU if I just wanna play some you know, filthy casual games. I definitely throw the extra IO pack on there. I didn't need any of the other stuff, but having VGA would be really nice when that comes up. And then I'd probably throw in another stick of RAM and then stick with the regular standard SSD and then upgrade my Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi 6. It's mind blowing to me that I even have those kinds of options. I think this thing is really cool. So like I said, again, thanks to Panasonic for sponsoring this video. And if you guys wanna check this thing out, it's gonna be linked in the video description.